Welcome to the Shortness Podcast. This is the YouTube show. We are yours. Um, Steph, John, uh, y'all probably don't even know who I am, but that's okay. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, I know who you are. The Enigma. There you go. I appreciate that. Uh, we had our first episode last week. How everybody feel about how that went? Uh, Silence. <laughs> John looks frozen in animation. Well, his eyes are moving. Yes. <laughs> oh, he was doing that on purpose. I thought something was wrong with the video. Uh, uh he fine. I mean, Did everybody than, feel good about it? Yeah, you know, other than my stuff, mm. you know, I'm extra. I'm Always, John. I was hypercritical. As of course, always. you of were. Course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, you need well, to stop. My mom that, told John. me to stop tripping. Yeah, I'm with her. Yeah. I'm don't make her. any sense. Yeah, no reason to trip. Well, this is going to be a thing, y'all. We're going to keep doing this every week. Like I said, it may be extra material from rollover from the podcast that we didn't get a chance to do, or maybe just you know something stupid we want to do on here. Well, I ain't gonna say stupid, <laughs> fun. Stupid. I'm sorry, fun. not stupid. Yeah, not, not stupid. But we want to give you guys some extra material. We want to give it with video form and everything so you can see how we react. And again, like I said, sometimes it may be the full podcast episodes that drop on Tuesday that you'll see on Thursday. Or um, it may just be extra material like today. And just give us a little moment. We're trying to get used to doing this thing on video. It's a little different. But, (laughs) you know, hey, it is what it is. So. Let's go ahead and get into some of the stuff that we were going to discuss today. Mm-hmm. We were going to do a little bit of a little taste test, but we're going to save that for next week. So John can find it. Y'all know John lives out in uh, one of the smallest <laughs> cities. Imagine um, that Texas town from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the type of town that John lives in. So they don't really have too many gas stations except for one. Um, that's right down the road, and I don't think his kind is welcome at that gas station. Come so, on, <laughs> you know what? He, Keith calls me extra, but he is way worse than me. Way worse than me. So yeah, With we're not going to get into you know trying to get my man. You know anything happened to him? Because I don't think it matters if it's day or night. You know, <laughs> they they just just not welcome. You know, he can't, they don't have colored sodas there. So. Oh, I hate that word. I hate that word. word. It's a trigger for me. It's a trigger. I'm glad you told me that. Yeah. Because you're going to continue to say it to me, right? So. See? Let's get into the first topic of today. (laughs) We all went out to the movies this past weekend or week and saw the new Jordan Peele movie, Nope. And Jordan Peele has directed some cinemas that, uh, movies that, uh, you know, sometimes they have you thinking, sometimes they're like, oh, wow. Or sometimes it's like, what in the world was this? But Nope came out a couple of weeks ago. It starred uh, Kiki Palmer and what's the guy's name? Daniel. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Is it Kalua? Kalua. Kalua. K, K something. Yeah, yeah, Kalua, Kalua. Yeah, I can't yes. pronounce it. Yeah, something like that. So I'm going to start off. John was the first one to see it between the three. No, yeah, John, John was the first was one to first. go see it. So, John, let's get your thoughts on the movie Nope with Jordan Peele directed. Okay. Um, so. I was left wondering what it was I just watched Uh, because there was a whole there was you know I'm sitting in this theater and there's some people who are laughing I'm not really laughing uh, with the rest of the crowd because I didn't Mm -hmm. think a lot of the stuff that was going on was funny if anything it was more thought provoking for me I can only speak for me um Especially at the very beginning, you're just, uh, 
the, just beyond shocked as to the scene that's being laid out in front of you. Which one with the monkey? Yeah, and I don't want to give away. <laughs> yeah, the way you said the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. I don't know how long the movie has been out. So I guess I'm trying to not spoil it, brother. They don't want to hear it. They'll, right. they'll they fast forward. Yeah. yeah they right. Fast forward. Yeah. So yeah, there's this monkey and mm. it's literally destroying the uh Anglo Saxon cast on this television <laughs> show so in front nice. of a live <laughs> studio audience. <laughs> so nice because you know I would have described it another way uh, um, white people trying to get uh, white people off of being each. brutalized That's nice by a too. chimpanzee in a front screaming. of a studio audience a screaming chimpanzee a screaming chimpanzee there's blood guts and ass all over the place <laughs> and I'm just frozen in, in, in suspended animation as to Okay, this is how we're starting off this movie. Yeah. So uh, then it actually gets into um, the actual uh, story about this uh, black family who uh, raised horses and and such. And uh, I wish Keith da- Keith David, one of my favorite actors and voice actors, was in the movie. And I was sad to see him go so early in the film. Man, that pissed me off to see yeah. Bishop Greenleaf get killed off just like five <laughs> minutes into the damn movie. Your yeah. hero. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so he dies. So then everything is left to his offspring, his son and his his daughter. And they're in this movie set. And I was trying not to get upset because once again, uh, well, it's not a movie set. It was for a commercial. And yeah. they brought one of the trained horses onto the movie set or commercial set. And uh, what's the the black actor's name? Uh, Kiki. Oh, no, Daniel. Daniel. Mm-hmm. Daniel's character is giving instructions on what not to do. Mm-hmm. And nobody takes them seriously. No one cares because they don't because they they think they know better. Right. Right. Everybody uh, in the production staff thinks they know better. And then Kiki comes on and basically delivers the same information. It's a little bit more detailed, a little bit more animated, a little bit more uh, inviting or engage. She was more engaging, Mm -hmm. but still. Uh, one of the production staff comes up to um, Daniel's character and says, hey, let's do it now. Daniel says, no, no, I'm the professional. Give the horse about five, ten minutes. Right. Nobody right. listens to him. They told him in one of the instructions, hey, there's this, don't put any flashy things or, or anything. And they mm-hmm. do the exact opposite. Horse gets spooked. Many horses get spooked by the smallest things. And he bucks and kicks this lady in the chest to hell. <laughs> I was hoping I like he kicked somebody part. in the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that part. Uh, I don't want to sound too long-winded, but um, there was a whole lot of innuendo in that particular film that I don't think a lot of people understood or got. Uh because even when Kiki was giving her uh, synopsis of how they got into horse training and uh, how uh, the first black pe- person to ever be placed on film was a black jockey um, being filmed on top of a horse. Yeah. Nobody knew it. Nobody cared. Right, right. And the things I took away is uh, the Anglo-Saxons, for whatever reason, feel they know better. Uh, even though they don't have the monopoly on information when it comes to certain things, i.e. in this particular case, horses. Um, Then they went back to the chimpanzee (laughs) and give him more detailed information uh, as far as the scene that took place, what triggered the chimpanzee. And I remember this... uh, this comedy special done by Cat Williams 
when he was talking about a lion finally realizing that it was a lion and mauling mm-hmm. one of the trainers. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what took place with this chimpanzee. Mm-hmm. It was removed from its home and placed into captivity. It was provided training that it probably did or did not understand. Ooh. There's Thunder. Thunder in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and you, um, yeah. And people getting outraged that the chimpanzee is doing what it's predisposed to do. Yeah. It felt like it was backed in the corner. It heard balloons popping the trigger. Yeah. And it started mauling people. Mm. So, yeah, there's this. Yeah. So the same thing, the black family who has the monopoly on information when it comes to animals, there's this thing that looks like a flying saucer. (laughs) <laughs> and they figure out that it's not a flying saucer. It's actually a living, functioning organism that is a predator, hides in this cloud, and it's hungry and territorial. And they figure it out. Nobody else can figure it out. The Asian dude who was spared by the chimpanzee could figure it out. And him and 44 other uh, individuals, a part of his staff and people in his theme park get sucked up into this giant. Sphincter. I'll just call it a sphincter because that's what it was. I, or or mouth. Right. I don't know. But anywho, uh, my thoughts, I don't know what I watched. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw my mother on Sunday. She said, hey, how'd you like it? I said, I, I don't know. I really yeah. don't know. Uh, it's going to be one of those things where I'm not going to pay to see it again. But if it comes to one of the streaming platforms, I want to see it again to see exactly what I missed. And I'll just leave it at that. Sorry for being so long with it, but no, oh, it's good. You're it's good, good, bro. You're good. What you thought about it, Steph? Ooh, so you know I'm an overthinker. Um, one thing for sure, if you anybody who's known me for any amount of time, though, I've been screaming that I want a pet monkey for the last year. Um, you want a know, pet monkey? Yeah, you know I've been saying that on Facebook. I want a pet monkey, and I'm gonna name him Carlos. How black are you? But I no longer want a pet monkey after seeing No, 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 no. Before before you even seen the movie, how black are you? What do you mean how black am I? Have you not noticed that these monkeys trip up and maul people half the damn death? That's what everybody was sending me on Facebook videos. Why in the hell would you want a monkey? Because I like being different. Everybody else got cats and dogs. I want something different. Be different and get a hamster. Oh, heck no. That's a rat. It's going to be, what? Wait a minute, wait. What the hamster going to do to you in clothes that a free willing, 10 times stronger than you monkey won't do? Let's I was say that get thunder. a little monkey and dress him up all cute with little Yeah, and that monkey get tired of being in clothes. And that thunder, <laughs> while you dressing him up, that thunder <laughs> rise in the background. That monkey just say, wait a minute. But you gotta love Hollywood how the lady survived. If that was real life, that lady would not have survived. And if you saw uh, the autopsy photos, her mouth would have been from down yeah. here to way up but here. But you saw her at the little carnival thing with the veil over. He kept saying that was his first purse crash. That was Yeah, her. the girl from the show. Not yeah, anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I share something with you real quick before you go into that? This may mm-hmm. sound morbid and sick, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know it does. Do y'all remember that 911 recording of that monkey attacking yes. that woman? Yes. You don't remember it? No. There was a 911 recording of this lady being mauled. Are you laughing about it? Send it to me, though. She died, right? She ended up dying. Right? I don't did know. She, or did she and survive? This is wrong. Laughing. This is she wrong. kept calling the monkey's name in the background. All you heard was the monkey make ah, 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 in the background. I do not like y'all at all. <laughs> I would say she got a two piece of the biscuit, but that would be an understatement. Make that noise? Because right. that's it's right. once again, I'm just picturing <gasps> in my head the audio <gasps> recording on national <gasps> television of this lady uh shrieking <laughs> from absolute despair. It ain't funny, yo. God, I'm not, not laughing funny. with them. Let me talk to my sky daddy real quick. It ain't funny. I didn't mean for that them. to be uh, 
my, it's not funny. Yeah, I didn't mean for the impression to be comical. But. For anyone that has had any interaction with any animal and it's been bad, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. sorry. But, you know, before you found, before I found out that the lady died, hearing the screaming, <laughs> I'm laughing because of John's impersonation. Hearing the screaming. We don't get canceled. We don't get canceled. I am so sorry, Lord. We don't get canceled. Peter, Peter, <laughs> just redact or, or, or omit anything you just heard in reference to that impression. Hearing the screaming. This is going to be a Facebook petition to cancel us. Of the monkey. And then the lady screaming the, the monkey's name. Okay, like it's a human being. So yeah, as I listen like, to this, like Tyler, <laughs> I'm sorry. The monkey that was the monkey's Tyler. name. Was Tyler. No, it was a normal. It was, it was a, a normal name, <laughs> like Bobby or George. Then I gotta send that to me because I, I now want to watch it. We, we, if I find it, I'll, I'll send it. It's just you. audio. You know, it's I not wanted, a video. I wanted a yeah. cat monkey, and then somebody like they kept sending me all these clips, and I'm like, oh. nah, I'm not, well, like, wait a minute, sorry, monkey ripped know. limbs off her body. I think, right? Yes. So they, well, didn't they have the, wait a minute, there is video of the monkey running outside, right, John? There's video of her, yeah, interacting with the monkey. No, I'm saying after the crime, wasn't there a video when the police arrived and the monkey was out around the corner? And and they had to put it down. Yeah, they put the monkey down. Oh, man. Listen, again, not funny. I was in my early 20s when this video came out. And I could not get over this monkey shrieking in the background and this lady t- trying to talk to it as if it was, I don't even know if that was it that lady or was it a neighbor or somebody. I can't escaped. remember if it was the neighbor. I think the neighbor had gone over there and just happened to see that the yeah. lady was getting mauled. Yes. And the neighbor knew the, the monkey's name and was familiar with the monkey, but the monkey wouldn't listen. He just kept on going in on his owner. It, oh, it went man. nuts. And that's why I, I read where Michael Jackson got rid of Bubbles because he said that Bubbles started getting a little aggressive and somebody told him this monkey, this chimp may snap one day and, you know, kill everything and everybody. You know, that's so what they had- used to call me in school. What? Bubbles. Why the hell they call you Bubbles? Because they said I look like Michael Jackson's monkey. Listen, blame my classmates. It wasn't me. Just go ahead. Look like Michael Jackson's monkey. Yes. Go ahead. That's that's. I just had it because I, I thought about it when you said his name. I'm this like, whole conversation has just gotten hijacked by this monkey. <laughs> And we're supposed that's, to be talking about. I mean, nope. it, it used to hurt my feelings, but I'm I'm on a go now. Forty two. I'm no longer. When was this? I was in middle school. Wow. Mm-hmm. Kids can be so very all throughout cool. middle school. They called you. No, nah, it was just like my fourth, fifth grade year. What happened was I'm not gonna call that's his name. I think, he, I think he watches. It might be different in a different state. Though. Yeah, I went to middle school fourth grade. Who um, did? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. You know, back then when Steph went to school, they were all together in one school. <laughs> Go ahead, Steph. We were not. Uh, oh, fourth my and goodness. sixth grade was middle school. Seventh and eighth was junior high. So mm-hmm. like, so back what happened was, it was this guy. I won't call his name because I think he listens to the podcast a lot. Call his name. Hell, he was calling you the chimp. <laughs> so he moved... Um, he moved to South Carolina from New York. He's a, a family originally from Trinidad. And I had a little crush on him. You know, he's a little short little thing. I had a mm. little crush on him and stuff. And then, you know, all that. But, you know, I guess he didn't Playing like that. Napoleon I had a crush complex. On him. Yeah, I guess he didn't like that I had a crush on him. So he started calling me Bubbles. And it started wow. other people still calling me Bubbles. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, uh, as far as the movie. Um, first of all, that, that opening scene made me no longer want a pet monkey. And then, um, and this is me, this is just me. Cause I overthink. I just felt the fact that Daniel's character being named OJ had some significance. Mm-hmm. Um, 
mm. mainly because you know you think I automatically thought about OJ Simpson. Well, you saw what the white woman did when she, mm. he said his name. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it took me back to, um, you know, just thinking, you know, oh, you have this history, your family of being horse trainers, and you have all of this knowledge, and, and these Caucasians still treated you like you were an N-word. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it goes back to Jay-Z's song, Story of OJ, you're still an N-word, I don't want to say mm -hmm. it. Um, but I just felt like throughout the movie, he was just trying to, he just kept trying to prove himself. Um I, I thought back to uh, all of these people that have been attacked by wild animals and just our, as humans, just our obsession with trying to tame the wilds. Um, we mm. pulled them out of their natural habitats and I felt like that's what the flying object was trying to do, trying to pull these humans out of their natural habitat and, and tame them per se. So it just felt like they were getting a taste of their own medicine, if that makes mm. sense. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. does. Um, it does. So that's that's what I got out of it. And uh, as far as the characters in the movie, I will say that Kiki's character was my favorite. Um, I don't know. I, I enjoyed her. So okay, that was my takeaway. All right. Well, I saw it last night, and I didn't like any of the characters in the movie except for the chimp. He was my favorite. <laughs> The chimp. <laughs> he was my favorite. Because he mauled everybody. Because he had enough. Yeah. You remembered oh. where he, who he was. Yeah. Oh, he tore shit up. And like, I think that for I sat there once the movie was done, and I was like, "What the hell was this? I just watch." He is starting to go down M Night Shyamalan territory with his movies, and I don't like it. Right. That was my. Uh, because you know i did enjoy i thought it, well, it was creepy how the thing was following the little spaceship was following them then when he ate all the people at the ranch well the thing sucked up the, the spaceship sucked up all the people at the ranch and then basically threw up all the blood over the house and everything i was like wow that's pretty cool visual right um, but I just walked out of there confused as hell. However, um, Iris showed me this article about the movie and pretty much it was saying what, what it was, what it was about, what, um, Jordan Peele meant when making the movie. And so when I read it, I said, okay, I kind of. Makes sense. So what he meant about the movie, Nope is an alien movie at its core. And this alien is packed with a metaphor with metaphor. On the one hand, it seems clear that the alien and his relationship to attempts to capture it via surveillance are an allegory for law enforcement and police brutality. The at times absurd challenges of simply proving that this predator is terrorizing people of color feel eerily familiar with the way law enforcement has continually abused its power and taken advantage of the black community with little to no repercussions in the United States. Right. Once you see Nope's alien, this way is hard to see it as much else. Um, the movie, it, the movie also focuses on the business and fringes of Hollywood in the entertainment industry. Um, the first time we meet Kiki Palmer's lead character, Emerald, she is pitching herself as a multi-hyphenate talent. Her objective is fame and fortune Hollywood style. This is in sharp contrast to her brother, OJ, who values completely different things. Um, Remember on telling line uttered by cinematographer Antler's host later on when speaking to Emerald, that dream you're chasing where you end up at the top of the mountain is the one you never wake up from. Mm -hmm. He's talking about fame and the industry machine. Um, that spotlight is almost like the light coming down from the nope alien, the one that literally chews you up and spits you out. So, and then also they had the TMZ person on there. So pretty much what it was saying, what they're saying that 
the movie is about is that it's covering two two things. It's cutter, covering the entertainment industry with Hollywood and how it picks you up, makes you think that you're something big, then it swallows you whole and then spits you out. Mm-hmm. And also the stalking of the ship with the characters of color, which were Kiki and uh, Daniel, and then also the Hispanic guy. It literally stalked them. So I can see the parallels of it being with, you know, police and how OJ, if you think about it, he told them not to look in the eyes, look it in the eyes, always look down. Right. Mm -hmm. So when encountering police, keep your hands straight, your eyes forward. Right. That's what we're always told not to look them, you know, in the eyes, just comply pretty much. And it's going to stalk you. It's going to be there. White is the national color of honor and all things pure. But in reality, you know, we, we, we know what that, that also can mean, especially Mm -hmm. for people of color. Right. So I think they said, that's what Jordan Peele, that's what Jordan Peele was saying himself. And after I read that article, I replayed the movie back in my head and I was like, okay, now I get it. Cause I didn't know what the hell that was. I watched to be honest with you. What about those little people that were in the stable that we thought were little creatures. And then they took the mask, off, like somebody's mask. They worked for up. the guy. They worked for, they were um, his children, the Asian guy's yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. are his sons. Okay. And yeah. That was retaliation for uh Kiki uh, Palmer stealing their the fake um, horse, fake horse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you like, think about it too, horses are sometimes known as Broncos, right? Mm-hmm. Who was riding the Bronco? OJ Simpson. There you go. So, oh, and they didn't give the chimpanzee any grace after he just massacred a whole bunch of people. Correct. That makes sense with him yeah. when that when that thing was following him when he was in the truck driving through the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Remember the helicopters yeah. were in the sky trying to catch him. Absolutely. Like, okay, so it makes sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was I was so, on the right course. And at the end, when the dust settled, OJ still came out on top. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kiki was able to finally get a picture of the brutality and the stalking mm-hmm. of the predator. Right. So. I, I can see the parallels. A weird way to go about doing it. I'll tell you that damn much. But Jordan you know. Bill is a creative genius. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, I walked out of there not knowing what the hell it was, but I was cool <laughs> afterwards. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, on to another thing. We didn't get a chance to talk about this on the podcast, uh, on the actual show on Tuesday. And this is about... Deshaun Watson, quarterback for now he's quarterback for what Cleveland Browns, right? Cleveland Browns, right? Yes. Okay. When all this was going down, he was the quarterback for the Houston Texans. Texans. We've talked about it on the show before, but there's been some latest um, updates mm-hmm. on his case, yeah. and he was facing some suspension time. So, Steph, can you talk us through what happened with that? Yes, well, he was suspended on – it was announced Monday that the greatest quarterback in Clemson University history was suspended without pay for the first six games of this NFL season um, for sexual misconduct uh, allegations. There were 24 allegations. He settled 23 confidentially. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's, of course, denied the accusations. And he said, and I quote, I've never assaulted, I've never disrespected, and I've never harassed any woman in my life. I don't have any regrets. Um, And as of one hour ago, the NFL um, has decided to appeal that decision. They feel that his suspension... Yeah. Talk about one hour ago now? Yes. Yeah, the deadline was today. Oh, wow. Um, So here's the thing. They want a season-long suspension, but nobody ever who has had these same accusations as Deshaun in the NFL has ever been suspended for more than six games. So wait a minute. Uh, Keep me honest here. The judge, who's the judge? And then who's the NFL that is saying, Hey, we're going to appeal it. Uh, Sue Robinson. 
was the former judge hired by the NFL and its players union to decide on Watson's punishment for a suspension uh-huh. covering the 17 game regular season in the playoffs. I'm reading directly from the article. No player accused of nonviolent sexual misconduct as Watson has been has received a suspension longer than six games, Robinson said in her ruling on Monday when she ruled for the six games. So the NFL then notified the NFLPA, which is the NFL Players Association, that it will appeal Judge Robinson's disciplinary decision and filed its brief this afternoon. It was announced one hour ago. Um, I got it via ESPN and CNN. Wow. Um, and okay. Commissioner Roger Goodell will determine who will hear the the appeal. Wow. Um, so wait a minute. Why would ex- he determine? Ain't he the judge executioner? And listen. So the NFL Players Association already said that it wouldn't appeal, but the NFL decided to, um, and they have not commented about the appeal so far this afternoon. The attorney for Watson's accuser said that the NFL does not care about the rights of women following the Cleveland Browns quarterback suspension for sexual misconduct allegations. And I have my thoughts on that. Um, And here we are. Well, hell, give your thoughts on it. Let's go. Um, Well, anybody who listens to the podcast or anybody who knows me knows how I feel about cancel culture culture and we live in such a sensitive time where everybody takes offense to every single thing you have people who don't even watch football talking about he needs to be suspended he needs this he needs that right right. now um do i believe that Deshaun has a i don't want to say a problem he's a young black millionaire you know what i'm saying enjoying his life i believe he let his freak flag fly it got out of hand. Once he announced that he was unhappy in Texas, these uh, the, the Texans found a way to gather these women together and say, you know, okay, here's what we're going to pay you all to do. Now, I'm just taking a guess here. I could be right, totally right, wrong. Right, right, right. Um, right, right. But to say, you know, for them to say the NFL does not care about people, I think that was a lot of the pressure for the NFL to appeal because that in this cancel culture, nobody wants to be like, well, we have the feminists against us. We have animal rights people against us. We have So mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily that they feel like six games isn't enough. I just feel like they don't want to uh, be canceled out. So that's just my thought. Mm. Um... So, John, has your feelings changed about this whole case? I think uh, six games is a little light. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess the judge looked at the facts that this essentially went to two different grand juries and two different grand juries decided not to prosecute any further uh on top of that uh judge sue stated that uh his um his acts sexual acts were non-violent in nature i'm not excusing it that's what her words were and precedents precedents dictated that six games be levied uh ezekiel elliott uh, I think he was charged with the same thing. He got six games. Um, and I don't remember the other individuals, but those that was the oh. most notable one. Uh, oh, I can give you some right now. Go ahead. Calvin Ridley, 17 games, betting. Vontez Burfitt, 12, 12 games. games, targeting. DeAndre Hopkins, six games, PED. Martavis Bryant, indefinitely, weed. Josh Gordon. 25 plus games, weed. Darren Waller, 16 games, substance abuse. And um, there we are with Deshaun Watson. And, and before you continue, let me say this. When you read about the appealing p- part of that, Steph, I thought that they were appealing the sentence on it being too heavy. I didn't know that the NFL is looking for an indefinite 
suspension. Yeah, that's they wanted, they wanted a whole season. They actually came out and said that's what they were looking for. Wow, um, before okay. this got that, adjudicated by Judge Sue. Okay, I hadn't been following that. Okay, okay, yeah, that's why I asked the question like, who was the NFL and who was the judge? Because I'm like, they're appealing it, and I'm thinking, why would they appeal if? the judge that was appointed by the NFL came with that decision. And I'm thinking, Oh, they just thought it was too harsh, but now it makes sense. What you're telling me continue. It's on you. Give us your thoughts. I know John, uh, John was putting down. Oh, sorry. With all these people. (laughs) I thought you were done. I'm sorry. I, I lost my train of thought now, but, um, John always loses train of thought, yo. <laughs> He's a man of trains. I'm lost. <laughs> yes, but so do said, so you do I, do you agree with the six games? Well, no, you said you think he needs more, right? I think he needs more, but once again, I'm looking at all the facts and such, and you know, Steph alluded to it before. If he wasn't making any grumblings about leaving Houston, we probably never would have heard about this. Ever. The Houston Texans themselves have actually settled 30 lawsuits um, outside of court uh, with these ladies as well. Probably just stating, hey, thank you for your business. And um, and we talked about it last year, Keith. Yeah. Um, and I forgot what show it was. It doesn't matter. Um, Several shows, I think, probably. <laughs> as, as far as how nefarious this was and then the connections from with um, who's the owner, uh, McNair family mm-hmm. and um, some of the uh, judicial personnel out there in, in Houston. Because didn't and, they send some of these young ladies his way? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, also in that ruling, it did state that he, Deshaun, is only allowed to uh, do business or get massages or therapy from a team, um, from team of physicians, essentially. Basically, men. Masseuses. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they want to say. Basically, men, but they want to be politically correct in the way they want to say it. I'm not absolving him from anything. I I feel six games is light. I'll just say that. Six games is a bit light. He may sway in the way. He may like that man touching him. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter. (laughs) I mean, at the end of the day, he's still going to get paid. His his contract is 100% guaranteed. So he's going to get paid. And I just realized that that list you read off of the suspensions and stuff, that two Clemson players on that list. What's wrong with my people? Well, look look at the coach. Look at where it was built. <laughs> I can't say anything about that. So. A lot of spirits. Yeah, and I've, I've spoken to y'all about this. Yeah, my you have. On that, you so. definitely have. You definitely have. I, you know, for Deshaun, I just say this. You know, um, I feel like we're so quick. It is. We're, we're all guilty of this. When I say this, all of us. When it comes to anyone that is black, that is of, that has some type of notoriety, where there is in entertainment, sports, political, whatever the case is, I feel like all of us are so quick to say that person's guilty mm-hmm. um, instead of letting the system play out because we kind of had the similar discussion the other other day. Um, for the podcast where we talked about mystical, right? This is the third allegation in 20 years that he's had. And it's the similar thing where it's money involved, rape force, uh, another person involved with raping this person, same thing. Right. And it's like immediately because that person has that reputation, we, we already say that person's guilty. And, Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it could be, hey, let me jump on this bandwagon. I can get them to believe that they did it because they've done it before. And I think that's quite unfortunate, not only for the victim or the the alleged victim, but also for the alleged person that is guilty or, or that's being accused of the crime. Because it's like, what if he's not guilty? 
right? What if he went to this masseuse parlor? What if one instance out of the 25, he did have sexual relations with that person, but it was consensual. And the news broke about the Texas, him wanting to leave the Texas and then ownership got involved. What if he did actually do it? We don't know because we would have to find this out in a court of law with evidence and everything to say, but immediately um, because it's 25 of them, we say, Oh man, well there's smoke, there's fire. And in most cases that's true, but in some cases it could be, Hey, I'm going to hop on this train and no one gets the benefit of the doubt. If, they've been accused of something before or they've been guilty of something before. You know what I mean? And so it's really an unfortunate case. I know that when we first started talking about this, I was gung ho on him being, you know, not guilty because of the the, the family and, you know, the, I mean, the ownership and all the other BS that was going on. I'm at a place now, and I know this isn't a popular opinion because I see it all the time, especially online, people get ridiculed for it. I want to see it play out in the court of law. Yeah. I want to understand who's guilty and who's not. And this isn't a case of, Oh, I don't support it because it's women or I'm not for him because he's done it before or whatever the case is. It's not that it's just, we have to get to a point. Yeah. We can give our opinion, but to publicly condemn and it be the majority will have a person, even if they're not guilty, being put in a position where they're not able to prosper anymore out here in the world because they have that stigma over their head, mm-hmm. even if they're innocent. So I'm at a place now where let's play it out because if he did it, then yeah, he needs to be under the jail, right? If he sexually assaulted all these women, he needs to be under the jail. If he didn't, do it then he needs to be cleared all the way around there needs to be an investigation and to who coerced these women into making up these false allegations and the women and whoever did that should be held accountable that's how i feel about it so i'm just like with a wait and see i think the suspension thing in my opinion is a bit early because we haven't found out through the court of law that he's guilty or not guilty. So how are you going to suspend someone if they haven't been found guilty or not guilty? Yeah, he's not. Roethlisberger. Go ahead. What are you going to say, John? I'm sorry. Yeah, he. the cases have been, uh, the charges have been dropped. So there so is no. There's what no, are you suspending no, him for there? There's no litigation. Right. So, so if they've been dropped, what are you suspending him for? What was the because uh, the, the, the accusations are out there? I mean, they filed civil suits, didn't they? And, and you can do that, right? Mm-hmm. But if in the court of law, I've been found not, or the charges have been dropped, or I've been found not guilty of the charge, but now you just want to sue to get some money because of your pain, anguish, and time. Okay, that's a different case. But if the charges were dropped and I'm found not guilty, or whatever, whichever one happens first, why am I being suspended? And 23 of the 24 um, cases have been settled. So I asked the question, Mm -hmm. why is he being suspended? We've got a, we've got a known predator that is one of the faces of the NFL, Mm -hmm. uh, being a quarterback, um, never, it, it was like it happened and it went away. That's because the NFL always has to make an example out of black men. Absolutely. Michael and, and that's why I am rooting so hard. And I and I and I tell you this, and I'm gonna to continue to say this, I am rooting so hard for the XFL to establish itself. Mm-hmm. Because yes, I wanna so see the good old or the USF club broken down. Yeah, either one. I wanna see it broken down because nobody, no black person is able to own a team. <clears throat> no black person really has any power. And again, we're the poster boys for the league to sell tickets. And we're also the poster boys to make examples out of. And that is a part of me with the NFL. That's my love and hate 
relationship with the NFL because that piece I don't care for. But again, the question I ask is if charges have been dropped, <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe talking too much today. I don't know. Um, <laughs> if charges have been dropped or he's not guilty, whatever the case is, what are you suspending this man for? They have to make an example out of somebody. Because I'm not saying I agree. Because I conduct detrimental disagree. to the league, to the shield, yeah. conduct detrimental to the shield. That's right. basically it. That's what they can get him on. Because this is there bad. This is bad press. It's bad press. Even if he didn't do anything, it's bad Cor- press for them. Correct. Yeah. Quite unfortunate. Again, like I said, I I, I wanted to, I want to see all this play out <clears throat> in a courtroom and. If he's found guilty in a courtroom, okay, he's guilty. Unless they got the evidence backing him, that's it. You're done. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? If he's not, then other people need to be held accountable. So it's not going to a courtroom. I, yeah, I see that now. And then they want to then they want to appeal it and try to get him suspended the whole year. Anyways, let's get off of that. Let's end this thing today. This week, we were supposed to try something, but like mm-hmm. I said earlier, John wasn't able to get it. This is what we were going to try, the little flame and hot mountain do. We're going to get this next week, though, for y'all. Maybe even some donuts, too, since John ain't get it, so we can have double the trouble. I don't know. But, John, we haven't had a sleep paralysis <laughs> story from you in quite a minute. And I know you shared with me on a phone call that You've had one recently. Can you walk us through that sleep paralysis event, please? I'll try my best. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So you remember one of the top tens. You okay? Puff, puff. I'm almost choked on a lemon seed. I'm drinking water (laughs) with lemon in it and the seed almost. Lemon infused water. Yeah. Oh, you got to put some mint leaves in it, too. I don't want no minted drink, Steph. It's, it's good for if digestion. If I want mint, I'm going to throw some gum in there. The mint and lemon is good for digestion. I digest just fine. I'm going to be it on the clears- toilet when we get off of here. <laughs> you know I'm always trying to keep it healthy. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, John. I, I, can't go ahead John. <laughs> I can't with him, John. Go ahead. Tired. I had to hold that one in. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I'm ready now. Whew. Yeah, so this um, non Hollywood story, it's in reference to uh, sleep paralysis episode I had a few weeks ago it was right after we recorded uh, the episode with the top 10 uh, like best movie villains or something like that what did you have what from the movie villain oh Keith stop Keith stop See, then he gonna stop telling the stories because you we know you only want him to do this so you can laugh. Go ahead. And I love John. it. I love it. His laugh is insufferable. It is. But anywho, it was Look at in, him. He's so extra. Go ahead, John. So So one of the the villains that uh was on my top ten, and I think it was on everybody else, was um Annie Wilkes. Oh, for misery. So this didn't happen in the living room uh, <gasps> where the the bulk of my episodes occur. This actually happened in my guest bedroom. Of course, because that's where the scene of misery <laughs> happened. Thank you for including that detail, uh, Keith. So, yes, I'm in the guest bedroom. I'm actually sleeping at the head of the bed for whatever reason. I had my fans going as I'm taking a nap. 
God. And then um, once again, I'm in the house all alone by myself. And um, I'm facing this, uh, this window, this big window that's in the guest bedroom. And probably about 45 minutes into my nap, I happen to wake up. And then, of course, my entire body is locked in place. And I can't move. So, John, can you give the people a visual of what that looks like? When you, what do you think it looks like? Oh, when you can't God. Move? Yeah, so. Please. <laughs> give them a visual, please. So, I'm like half sleeping on my side. I have one hand like cupping the small of my back as I'm trying to get loose or shake loose <laughs> or whatnot. And I have a full view of the threshold of the entryway, which is the door to the guest bedroom. And it's wide open. And guess who's standing at the threshold of the door? Annie Wilkes. I'm trying not to laugh. Annie Wilkes in her long sleeve green shirt and her overall dress with a Triple H sledgehammer. And so I catch a glimpse of Andy and I am frozen in, I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to use a term I just used in reference to that monkey mauling everybody on the, uh, well, actually, no, the the phone call lady with her uh, pet chimpanzee, despair. I was in absolute despair because I'm looking at Andy. Andy has the sledgehammer cock ready to go like this. And I'm sitting here over here, you know, trying to bleed the clock so I can move again so Annie can go away. Oh, Jesus. So then Annie, we lock eyes and Annie gives me this. I'm not, I'm not going there with, with, you know, Mm -mm. Keith. Oh, I'm trying not to laugh, John, but he is just... Go ahead and laugh. No. It's the the appropriate human response. I knew it wasn't real, but I mean, she's standing right there. I was like, Annie, I know you're not real, but this is is, is horrifying. This is full-on Kathy Bates standing in your... That's Kathy Bates reprising her role as Annie Wilkes is standing in the threshold oh my god of my guest bedroom doorway with the sledgehammer oh I got a headache oh so um so we locked eyes and then finally thank god um somebody called me and my uh my smartwatch vibrated and for whatever reason, if you get touched, it just jerks you right out of it. And thank God, it my uh, vibrating smartwatch jerked me out of that uh, terrifying situation with Annie Wilkes in this <laughs> particular. I cannot stand him. I cannot stand Keith. John, that's not your friend. Yes, he is. This just, is the he's been he's been he's been absolutely consistent since since these started happening in my early twenties. He's been very no. He's oh, I see him all the way now. back in okay. his in his chair. I play he for Iris every day. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't breathe. Okay. <clears throat> it's not good to be this fat and laugh like that. <clears throat> okay. I, I pray for Iris daily. Uh, listen, the prayers need to be for John because he over there having a sleep paralysis <laughs> attack after us doing the top 10. Do you understand? Right. Like, you, so you didn't have is? anything after seeing no. No. It's too early. Not yet. Too- it's too early. Oh, okay, not yet. Okay, it's too early. But the top ten made you the top. Have a sleep the top us. ten probably came five days after we delivered the top ten. So, 
So we should expect something from Nope maybe tomorrow, Friday. Uh, yeah, what are we? Uh, I saw Nope on Sunday, so today's Thursday. Yeah. So we Friday have another sounds about right. Friday, today's Wednesday. So maybe about Saturday or so. I'll just in time for us to record episode eighty. <sighs> well, this one got to be on video too. Oh yeah, this is true. Oh my God, Annie Wilkes. Annie Wilkes had John in the sleep paralysis state. Oh man, I can only imagine what would have happened or what might have happened if your your smartwatch did not go off. Nothing. She would have just stood there and she well, could have got close to you. She could have, and that's all it would have been. So you just was locked eyes with it. Like, do you know what your eyes were looking like? Like you just was like I was like this the whole time, like <laughs> I couldn't do anything else. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Listen. That's oh all I can God. do. This, this, this right here. If you haven't seen Misery, please do. It's with Kathy Bates and James Conn. Great movie based on the Stephen King book. The book is way more graphic than the movie. And he passed better. away a few weeks ago, right, James? He did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, please do not redo that movie ever. I don't plan on it. No, no, no I'm saying, saying I'm, I'm asking Hollywood. Yeah, I don't want to remake. I don't like reboots anyway. But I'm just yeah. No. Okay. Well, that's our time for today. I wanted to discuss the Will Smith apology, but we could do that next week. I am John. Um, thank you for helping me lose. Um, maybe point. Two pounds just now with that. <laughs> I'd probably say about two pounds. You probably dropped two pounds. quarter, or maybe a quarter. Maybe. No. Um, we hope to do this. Not hope. We are going to do this again next week. I hope you guys enjoy. Please, as you know, you already are subscribing to us when you watch this video, but pass it along to your friends. Make sure you subscribe when you watch our video. Subscribe so that way you'll get the alerts that a new video is posted. We may not post every Thursday, so please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We are the Short Desk Podcast. Thank you for joining our YouTube page.